You know, the only thing that surprises me, Susie, is that that team hasn't won more games. You know, I, I tune over and watch him every now and then. I get more into the NBA and the playoffs. But uh, uh, he is a prize in that uh, that game that you talked about, the 5-5-5-5-5-5 five, 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 forever. Uh, yeah, he was magnificent. He runs the floor with, with grace, uh, and he's able to dribble down easily and uh, and make passes. So, you know, I think the future is great for the uh, San Antonio Spurs, but obviously they have to get up better team around him and then and then go from there but uh, he's a delight to watch I have to tell you that and Greg Popovich couldn't be a better coach for him as he molds him and grows him into the potential that he has in front of him you have so much experience watching the NBA have we ever seen anything like him before and what do you expect of him that's a very good question Uh, my answer off the top of my head is no we haven't. Obviously, I expect multiple championships, and uh, Popovich will will bring together a group, and then he'll turn it over to a uh, a younger coach going forward. The biggest change, Susie, around the NBA since I was around it, uh, and this that goes way back into the uh, '80s, the era of the Celtics and the Lakers, and the Lakers and the Celtics, et cetera, et cetera, and then Michael Jordan appears uh, for the running of the Bulls. The, the biggest difference is, and I think Michael Jordan probably started to bring it in, the individuals are so much better than they were during my era. The game the game depended on a ball move much more physical than it is now. Uh, when you tried to drive the lane, et cetera, et cetera, you were going to catch a couple of elbows. And then LeBron James epitomizes, uh, LeBron epitomizes the differences in the NBA, the all-around skill, one person, his fourth quarter. His fourth quarter against the Clippers is one of the most magnificent fourth quarters I've ever seen, and he's he's one of the old guys now, and uh, he took charge of the game, and it was the greatest comeback that he's had in the fourth quarter. So, so what we have now, we have the greatest individuals who we've ever seen on a basketball floor, and along comes Wimby at his size with the ability to do what he, and he, he will be the next generation. LeBron will pass the torch to Wimby, and uh, we'll go from there. You know, you look at the two of them and you set up these two, the the future and the past, and clearly LeBron is not the past, he's the present. But which is more impressive to you as you you look at the – is it the numbers that LeBron plays night after night? Is it the actual output? Because he can't sustain this. We talk about this all the time. We talked about this at length yesterday. He can't play the minutes that he does, and yet he's in the top five of the NBA in current minutes played. And so I'm wondering if you could put that into perspective for me. Well, Susie, it's uh, it's unreal what he does because of his age uh, and able his ability. I'll tell you, the first time I watched him this season was not that game the other night against the Clippers, but it was a championship uh, game of the tournament, and they moved it to Las Vegas, and he took over. And I was I was very impressed because LeBron certainly doesn't need the money, but he knew the kids on the bench did uh, that they weren't that well paid a couple hundred thousand dollars a piece. I think that night uh, in Las Vegas in their championship game. And I was re- very impressed with how hard he played as a team. Davis also obviously uh, was, was able to be a huge factor in that game and is able to help LeBron when, when he's completely healthy. Uh, so I would say about LeBron, He's way ahead of Wimby because of what he has accomplished. Okay, we we look at Wimby and we see great things and great size and the ability to do what he did the other night in that game. Uh, but he has not accomplished anywhere near what LeBron has. I mean, when you – LeBron, a little bit different than Michael in that he moved his championship from city to city to city, uh, whereas Wimby, Wimby hasn't even been in the playoffs yet. So we don't want to – I would say to everybody, just slow the roll a little bit until until he's able to lead the Spurs into a championship. I mean, LeBron, LeBron clearly has that skill going, as did Michael. I mean, people forget that Michael took a year off to play minor league baseball before he came back, and then the Bulls uh, went on and won more championships. And uh, and Michael Jordan drove that team with the Bulls. I covered him on radio for. Uh, for CBS back in that day and then ABC. And uh, I was at courtside 
And I'll never forget one championship game. They were coming down the floor. Steve Kerr had come off the bench, and he was in the backcourt alongside. Michael had the ball. And right in front of our table, Michael Jordan leaned over and said, shoot the ball, Stevie, shoot the damn ball. And they went back down, and he went inside, and then Pippen whipped it outside, and Kerr nailed a big three-pointer with time running down in the fourth quarter. That was So, you know, Jordan and LeBron, Jordan passed the torch to LeBron, and both won championships. With Wimby, you know, we're still amazed at his size and his ability to do things, but he has not accomplished anything yet. So we have to, I said, we just have to slow the roll a little bit and uh, and see, you know, how durable is he going to be? I mean, both Michael and Jordan turned in monstrous, monstrous minutes uh, throughout their career. And the game is physical. It takes a toll. You're running up a die. I think, as I recall during my era, we put uh, – a monitor on John Havlicek because he moved so much during a game. And I think Susie, I think it was 13 miles he ran in a Celtic game, which, which gives you an idea of, uh, of some of the toll on some of these guys. And you think about the number of years that, that Jordan and uh, certainly LeBron James now have done that. So I would, I, I would just say, let's, let's just hold on. Let's, let's see what the Spurs, First of all, the Spurs have to get a team around him. I mean, that that goes without saying. So the uh, the scouts and everybody, you know, free agency and the draft, uh, because they certainly are not there yet. I guess that's the only thing. The only thing that surprises me is that the Spurs haven't won more games with uh, with Wimby there. And uh, you know, I keep an eye on it because I'm always kind of interested in uh, in who's going to qualify for the playoffs and who those top top six teams are. But when you, when you look at the standings and the Spurs have only won 12 games, 12 games now, all right? Now, that's only two other teams have fewer, and that would be the lowly Detroit Pistons and Washington Wizards. So so I think we just have to I, – listen, I don't want to put Wimby in the Hall of Fame just yet, I, if that – if that answers your question. 100%. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.